Hello guys, how you doing? Hope you all doing great so in this video, we are gonna see, what if neglected Naruto was secretly heir of Senju clan, this is part 1, and if you want more of this video, then please leave a like share and subscribe. Let's get in the video. Um, sensei. 8 year old Ichiha Sasuke stood, his arms crossed, watching with cold eyes as Akamichi Chaoji and Nara Shikamaru, both his age, stood opposite each other in front of their teacher, Yumi Noruka, behind the ninja academy. A traditional shinobi spar was taking place. What? Haruka asked Chaoji, who looked a bit meek. I don't really want to beat up my friend. That's not what we're doing, this is a traditional shinobi spar, Haruka said, smiling. Even the Hokage and his friends trained like this to help them grow strong. Shikamaru didn't seem to listen, however. Instead, he just turned away and walked off. Sensei, I'm fine with losing by ring out, he announced, which made Chaoji smile. Call the next pair. Aruka sighed, exasperated, then gestured for Shikamaru to come back and said, fine. Shikamaru, Chaoji, the symbol of harmony. Next. As Chaoji and Shikamaru hooked their middle and index fingers with each other, Aruka looked over the clipboard in his hands, trying to decide on the next pair. Uh. Next is Yuzumaki Naruto. And it's just Sasuke. You're up. As Sasuke walked into the ring that had been drawn on the ground, the girls in his class squealed with joy. Sasuke hated when they did that. He thought that ignoring them would make them stop, but they seemed to love his loner personality. Ignoring them once more, he looked at the kid who walked into the ring with him. The boy had spiky blonde hair, intense blue eyes, and three strange whisker-like markings on each cheek. Sasuke could see that he shouldn't relax when it came to this boy, as his expression was very rebellious, and his already bruised knuckles, coupled with the faded bruise on his cheek and the butterfly bandage over the cut above his left eyebrow, told him that this kid was a fighter. Let's do this, the other boy, Naruto, said with a grin that screamed defiance and confidence. Naruto. Haruka barked, placing his hand in a half-ram seal. Before the spar, you have to make the symbol of combat. It's the proper protocol. I couldn't give a crap. Naruto exclaimed brashly and very loudly. Just start the fight, yeah? So stupid. Sasuke muttered. Fine, I'll take you down in one. Stop, the both of you. Haruka ordered. Sheesh. Listen, these shinobi spars are a tradition that's been passed down for generations. I realize there's a lot of etiquette, but it's important, and here at the academy, we're teaching you the basics. First, you always face your opponent and point your fingers like this. This is the symbol of combat. It represents on half of a seal that might be used to activate an ninjutsu technique, and means, I've come to face you in battle. When the spar is over, both participants make the symbol of combat and lock their fingers together, to make the symbol of harmony, and acknowledge that they are still comrades. This is all part of the proper etiquette for a shinobi spar, and Aruka stopped and twitched when he saw Naruto looking away, cleaning out his ear. Are you listening, Naruto this is the second time I've told you this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Say yes and say it once, you little brat. Naruto scoffed, but then smirked and formed the symbol of combat, staring into Sasuke's eyes, the Ichiha forming the same symbol. Begin. Naruka yelled out, and the two kids charged at each other. Sasuke was right when he had assumed that Naruto could fight. He was used to being strong and all, so when Naruto seemed to anticipate every strike and counter with the same efficiency as Sasuke himself, the Ichiha was understandably shocked. The two traded blows, and Sasuke, though entirely focused on the fight, noticed in the corner of his eye how the other students were staring in open shock. None of them had apparently been expecting Naruto to be this good. Sasuke grunted when he felt a punch connect with his stomach, hard. And when he hunched over, gritting his teeth, his mind's eye flashed back to that night, when he in a rage fueled by grief, had charged at Itachi, who had delivered a similar punch to his stomach. Stumbling back, Sasuke glared at Naruto, and before his eyes the blonde's features changed. Instead of the spiky-haired cocky blonde, there stood the source of his hatred, Ichiha Itachi. Sasuke felt that familiar rage fill him, and he charged at his brother with renewed vigor, taking him completely by surprise with his increased speed. He laid into him with punches, then managed to knock him to the ground, jumping on him and straddling him. His eyes wide with rage, Sasuke raised his fist, ready to pound Itachi's head to mush. Then, he heard the cheering of the girls in his class, and he heard Aruka's call of, Sasuke wins. Which brought him back to the present. He saw Itachi's mouth curve up into a smirk. Oh, I've seen eyes like that before, he said, and when he spoke, Sasuke heard Naruto's voice, and Itachi slowly warped back into Naruto, whose smirk faded to be replaced by a curious look. But for once, it's not directed at me. Who are you looking at? Sasuke felt himself twitch. He hesitated, then slowly got off Naruto as Aruka said, now, both of you make the symbol of harmony, and we'll move on. Naruto got to his feet and rubbed the bruise that had resurfaced on his cheek, after Sasuke punched him rather hard on it. 
He put his hand in the symbol of combat, then held it out to Sasuke, giving him a calculating look. Sasuke grunted and did the same, hooking his fingers with Naruto's. They let go immediately, and Sasuke turned away, gritting his teeth. Later found Sasuke sitting on the Yandai Mei's head on the Hokage Monument. He had never been up there before, but Aruka, who had noticed the look in Sasuke's eyes, had told him that it was a great place to just sit down and think. He said that he had gotten the idea from another student. When asked who, the teacher had just shrugged and walked away. Sasuke had to admit, he could see so much from up there. He felt so. Small, as though his problems were just a single drop in a vast ocean. He. Boy, came a grumpy voice from behind Sasuke, interrupting his train of thought. Sasuke looked over his shoulder to see that kid from the academy, Naruto, standing there, his hands in the pockets of his beige cargo shorts. He hadn't changed shirts, so his white t-shirt still had blood spatter on it. Surprisingly, however, his busted lip had already healed, and the bruise on his cheek had almost completely faded. Naruto pointed at the stone where Sasuke sat. You're in my seat. Don't see your name on it, loser, Sasuke snapped back, glaring at Naruto, whose face scrunched up in anger. Want me to kick you off, you little shit. I'm as tall as you. Sasuke barked. Then, he scoffed and turned to look over the village again. What are you doing here? I always come here, Naruto muttered as he walked up to Sasuke and sat down next to him. The people in this village treat me like crap, so I come up here and look over the whole village, and. I dunno, I feel something. Something? Sasuke asked, raising an eyebrow. An incredible need to protect this place, Naruto explained with a shrug. I'm gonna be a great ninja and continue the old man's work. Old man. The Hokage Jiji. I'm gonna take over for him as Hokage one day. Then everyone in the village will acknowledge my existence. Sasuke scoffed in amusement. What a foolish dream. Suddenly, Sasuke found his collar grabbed by Naruto, who pulled him closer and glared into his eyes with an intensity that Sasuke had never seen before. There was a fire in Naruto's eyes that burned brightly, brightly enough to shock Sasuke into speechlessness. This kid had 100% confidence that his dream would come true. Say that again. Naruto growled out angrily. Jer off. Sasuke grunted, slapping Naruto's hands off his collar. He righted it again and lowered his head, so that half his face was covered by the Haichiha trademark collar, gazing darkly out over the village. I said it was a foolish dream. Empty words aren't going to make them reality. All dreams start out as words. They're the foundation you can build them on, Naruto said insistently. Without dreams, we will fall into stagnation, and our lives will become inconsequential. Sasuke blinked at that and slowly turned to look at the important-looking Naruto in confusion. Stagnation. Inconsequential. He asked curiously. What's that mean? Oh no, Naruto said with a shrug. But that's what Jiji told me when I told him about my dream, and if the Hokage says it, it must be important. Ho oh ho, indeed, Naruto-kun. Both Naruto and Sasuke jumped in surprise and turned their heads to see none other than the elderly Sandai Mei Hokage standing behind them, smiling brightly. Ah, Jiji. Naruto exclaimed as he shot to his feet, pointing accusingly at Sasuke. This punk said my dream is dumb. D.C.H. Sasuke pouted and looked away. Don't be too hard on Sasuke-kun, the Sandai Mei said kindly, walking up and kneeling behind Sasuke, putting a hand on his shoulder. Sasuke's life has been rough recently, so it is understandable that he is skeptical. But it's amazing that you two found each other up here. Ha! Ah. Naruto blinked, tilting his head to the side. What are you on about, Jiji? You both have darkness in your lives, a darkness no one could ever understand, the Sandai Mei said, which made Sasuke's eyes widen as he turned his head to look at Naruto in shock. This kid had a rough life. I think that, of all the people in this village, you two are probably the ones who can understand and help each other the best. Sasuke looked skeptically at Naruto, who gave him an identical look. That pampered prince. Naruto asked at the exact same time as Sasuke said, that troublemaking idiot. The Sandai Mei just chuckled as he patted both boys on the head and said, Iruka told me that you two spar today, the strongest in the class. If you were that energetic during your spar, you should have gotten a feel for each other's reasons for fighting. Rising again, the Sandai Mei smiled brightly at them. I believe, Naruto-kun, Sasuke-kun, that if you two talk, you will become great friends. It's not good to keep everything bottled up inside. With that, the Sandai Mei disappeared in a puff of smoke. Naruto looked a bit confused for a moment, then shrugged and plopped down next to Sasuke again, humming. What do you mean? Head it rough. The blonde mumbled, and Sasuke's eyes darkened as he lowered his head again, hiding behind his collar. I don't want to talk about it. Fine, Naruto said with a shrug. Not like I want to talk to a punk like you, anyway. I just came here to enjoy the view. Sasuke scoffed, keeping his gaze on the village. 
The two sat in silence for a while, and Sasuke thought back to the spar he had had with Naruto earlier that day. The Sandai Mei said that they should be able to understand each other, and Sasuke could remember that Itachi had said something similar once, that when two warriors clash, their minds connect, and their true feelings are displayed to each other. Slowly, Sasuke turned his head to look at Naruto, who kept his defiant look on his face as he looked over the village. You have determination, Sasuke spoke up suddenly, which made Naruto look at him. I got that from our spar. You're constantly trying to prove yourself, and the determination is just an outlet for all the hate you hold inside. Hatred for what? Why should I answer? You didn't. Sasuke gave another scoff and looked away from Naruto again. He contemplated for a moment, then said, I am from the Ichiha clan. My brother was the strongest of us all. He was my hero. For as long as I can remember, I have always wanted to be like him. Then, about a month ago. Sasuke closed his eyes and took a deep breath, the events flashing before his eyes. He contemplated avoiding telling Naruto, but felt that it might be best if he talked about it. About a month ago, my brother killed my entire clan, before fleeing the village. Naruto blinked in surprise at that. Wow. That. Sucks, I guess. What about you? Sasuke asked, hoping to find something else to focus on. What about me? Have you lost anyone? The Hokage said we'd understand each other, so. I don't think he meant it like that, Naruto said with a shrug. I've never lost a family member. Oh, Sasuke thought and couldn't help but envy Naruto for how lucky he. And again, I've never had any family to begin with. Huh? Sasuke blinked in surprise. Maybe Naruto wasn't so lucky after all. Yeah, I'm an orphan. No idea who my parents are. I think they died on the day I was born, during the QB attack or something. Oh, Sasuke said slowly. Is that why you have such a suppressed hatred? Nope, I don't hate the QB, Naruto said, shaking his head. I don't really hate anything. That's total crap, Sasuke muttered, giving Naruto a skeptical look. The Hokage said that we'd be able to understand each other, since we've sparred, and I felt a lot of hatred coming from you. Naruto scoffed, crossing his arms and turning away while muttering, what do you know? I know a look of hatred. I see it every time I look in the mirror. So tell me. Naruto kept his defiant look for a few moments, but then he seemed to deflate as he turned his head to look over the village. The villagers, I guess. He muttered. They think I'm blind and deaf, but I see and hear everything. Most of these people. They glare at me for no reason, and they whisper things about me, even though they don't know me. They whisper such. Hurtful things. Why would they do that? I mean, you're a troublemaking fool, but that's. Shut up. Naruto snapped. I only started causing trouble because they whispered a bunch of crap. Sasuke's eyes widened at that. Then. Why are they whispering? Oh uh, no, Naruto said with a shrug. They've been doing it for as long as I can remember. When I ask the old man, he gets all dodgy and changes the subject. So. You have no idea what it's like to lose family. And I have no idea what it's like to not have family in the first place or be whispered about by the villagers. Sasuke muttered, furrowing his brow. How, exactly, are we meant to understand each other? Well, I don't think Jiji meant that we'd understand the Thinji itself, but the pain it caused. The Thinji? The Jiji has a word for it, but I can't peep on. I can't say it. You should work on that. Them a break, alright. I never had someone to teach me properly. Sasuke scoffed in amusement as he looked over the village again, a small smirk on his face. You're pretty useless, aren't you? Shut up. I'll kick you down from here. As Sasuke walked into the academy the following day, he couldn't help but feel. Happy. Yes, it was probably happiness that he felt. He and Naruto had talked a lot the previous evening. They had found that the Sandai Mei was right. Though their situations were vastly different, they had connected thanks to the fact that the pain they felt was very similar, despite being so radically different. Also, Sasuke felt quite proud of himself for having spent most of the night studying a dictionary so that he could confuse Naruto with big words the following day. Sasuke looked round the classroom, finding two fangirls sitting on either side of the seat he had taken the previous day. They were watching him expectantly, and Sasuke felt very reluctant to go there, so he desperately searched for another spot to sit in. He found it, and as luck would have it, the seat was next to Naruto, who was resting his head on his arms, snoozing peacefully. Yo, Sasuke said as he came up to Naruto and sat down next to him. Naruto opened a single eye and looked at him. Yo, he muttered back, yawning. You look tired. I was up late last night, Sasuke said, smirking. He didn't need to tell him why he'd been up. He'd just settle for using the fruits of his labor. Yeah, same here, Naruto said with a nod. I'm very haggard. I spent most of last night reading a dictionary. It was exhilarating and refreshing at the same time as it was vexatious. Sasuke twitched. 
He narrowed his eyes and looked away, realizing that he had no idea what that last word meant. I also studied a dictionary, but I never got that far into it. Yeah, those words were probably the only words I bothered to actually memorize properly, Naruto said, sighing tiredly. It's why you too much of a hassle to bother with big words. H.N. Alright, alright, settle down. Came Aruka's voice as the Chunin teacher entered the classroom. As usual, this had no effect whatsoever on the class, who kept chattering with each other. Aruka twitched once, took a deep breath, and yelled out, shut the hell up. This, as usual, got their attention, and classes got started. After the class was let out for the day, Naruto and Sasuke didn't go to their respective homes. Instead, they headed to the library, and Sasuke couldn't help but notice the look Naruto got from the librarian, who had looked on the verge of kicking him out before she saw Sasuke accompanying him. He didn't voice this, however, as Naruto was in a good mood, since he had finally gotten a friend. Well, Sasuke hadn't officially said that they were friends, and though he was loath to admit it, he saw Naruto as one. He didn't really know why. They had just clicked somehow. So now, they were looking through scroll after scroll, researching ninja and chakra as much as possible. Naruto had wanted to spend the day at Ichiraku Raymond, but Sasuke had convinced him to go to the library. After all, he couldn't grow strong enough to become Hokage and get everyone to acknowledge him by spending his days at the Raymond stand. Ah, Sensor Ninja, Medic Ninja, Offensive Ninja, Defensive Ninja, Jinjutsu Specialist, Ninjutsu Specialist, Tojutsu Specialist. Naruto muttered, looking through his 13th scroll that day. There's so much to choose from. How do you know which one fits you? I'll be an offensive type, I think, Sasuke said, humming. Yeah, definitely. I'll also specialize in all three. Ninjutsu, Tojutsu, and Jinjutsu. Ha! Ah, you don't seem the Jinjutsu type. Naruto said, tilting his head to the side. Well, not right now, but when I get my Sharingan, it'll come naturally. Naruto stared at Sasuke for a long time. Sha! Rin! Gan! I'll tell you later. Shrugging, Naruto looked back down at the scroll, furrowing his brow in thought and picked up another one, clicking his tongue and muttering, I think I'd make a good censor. Also, I'll probably be a mix of offensive and defensive, specializing in ninjutsu and tojutsu. It'd be good to have a censor on the team, Sasuke said, nodding slowly. On the team? Well, we're going to be on the same team, aren't we? You're probably the only one in the academy I can stand. And hopefully, that Hyuga girl will end up with us, too, as she's probably the only girl who doesn't follow me around like a lost puppy. I didn't know we get to pick our teammates. We don't. But we can manipulate things so that we do. Naruto blinked slowly. Then, he ordered, explain. From what I can tell, they pair the highest scoring boy and girl with the lowest scoring boy. Therefore, I will become rookie of the year, as is expected of me, but you get barely passing grades and become dead last. That way, we'll end up on the same team, even if you're just below me in power. You sound confident in your own power. I'm an Ichiha, so I have a right to be, was the only explanation Sasuke gave, which made Naruto snort. Then, Naruto burst out laughing, and Sasuke was incredibly surprised to find that he was joining in in the laughter. Naruto. Sasuke barked in an uncharacteristically loud voice. Around his friend, dare he say best friend. Sasuke had always been different. He was a lot. Happier, he supposed one could call it. It had now been six months since they met, and Sasuke had found something more to live for. When his clan was killed, he had thought that everyone he cared about had disappeared. All he had seen in front of him was Itachi and his desire to kill the man. Now, however. He had realized that although the Ichiha clan would always be very dear to him and he would always miss them, he could get new people who were precious to him. Granted, he had only found one person who he could call precious, but still. Also, his clan could be revived. That responsibility rested on Sasuke's shoulders now if he wanted to bring the clan back to greatness. Therefore, he couldn't just focus all his attention on getting strong enough to kill Itachi. After all, if he failed. Then the Ichiha clan would be forever gone from Konoha. Naruwo. Sasuke came to a sudden halt when he reached their clearing and training area 3, where he and Naruto had been given permission to train. He found Naruto sitting in the very center, looking around with a bright smile on his face. Why was he smiling? Because trees had sprouted from the ground around him, trees that Sasuke was 100% sure hadn't been there before. How? Oh, hey, Sasuke. Naruto said, getting to his feet and jogging over to Sasuke. Isn't this cool? I can create trees. How did you do that? Wood isn't an element. Sasuke said, eyes still wide in shock. Their senses had sharpened enough that they weren't surprised when the sand eye may appeared in the clearing. They heard him the second his sandal touched the dirt. I would also like to know that, Naruto-kun, the Sandai Mei spoke up, staring at Naruto curiously. 
Well, I just sat there, meditating, and suddenly I started molding chakra, but it felt different, somehow, like my chakra was split in two. So, I tried putting it together again, and. Poof, Naruto finished lamely, gesturing for the trees around them. Naruto-kun, did you know that the wood release is a bloodline limit? The sand I may said seriously, making both Naruto and Sasuke go wide-eyed. Whoa. Naruto exclaimed, a grin appearing on his face as he turned to Sasuke. Did you hear that, Sasuke? I have a bloodline, too. Indeed you do, Naruto-kun. Have any of you heard of the wood release before? I've heard it mentioned by my father once, I think, Sasuke said, scratching his head. Other than that, no. Nope. The wood release was the special bloodline ability of the Shadai Hokage, boys, the Sandai Mei said, and it didn't take more than a second for both Naruto and Sasuke to realize what he was saying. Holy mother hovering crap. Naruto exclaimed, eloquently putting into words what both boys felt. I'm. I'm related to the Shadai Hokage. And in turn the Nidai Mei, Naruto-kun, the Sandai Mei said, nodding. How, I do not know. I didn't think either of your parents were related to them. The Nidai Mei never had any children, and the last known descendant of the Shadai is. The Sandai Mei's eyes widened. No. It couldn't be. Naruto blinked, then looked at Sasuke, who shrugged. Neither of them needed to speak in order to know that the other had no clue what the Sandai Mei was talking about. The old Hokage seemed to realize this, as he smiled at them. The last known descendant of the Shadai Hokage was the son of Senjutsu Nade. However, she was forced to give him up for adoption, against the wishes of the village, of course, as she didn't think she could be trusted to raise a child. I believe that fate somehow intervened, and the child remained in the village despite everything. A smirk slowly spread on the Sandai Mei's face. Naruto-kun, I believe you now deserve to find out the truth about your parents, he said, making Naruto's eyes widen, along with Sasuke's, as Naruto had told him that the Sandai Mei had often said that it would be too dangerous for the blonde to know. Why don't we talk somewhere more private? Can Sasuke come? Naruto asked hopefully. Cause you know I'll tell him anyway. The Sandai Mei looked at Sasuke, who thought for a moment that the old man doubted he could be trusted. Those thoughts were unfounded, however, as the Sandai Mei smiled not even half a second later. Of course, good friends should never have to hide things from each other, after all. Secrets create a rift between them that can almost never be mended. So, Sasuke-kun, would you like to come along as well? Yes, Hokage-sama, Sasuke said eagerly, nodding. If Naruto was related to the Shadai Hokage, he wanted to know about it. The Sandai Mei reached out and placed a hand on their shoulders, and then all three disappeared in a blur. Barry appeared inside the Hokage's mansion, in the Sandai Mei's office, to be exact. The walls were lined with scrolls, showing that that was all the Sandai Mei did in this office, work on all manner of ninjutsu. Sit down, the Sandai Mei said, gesturing for four cushions on the floor. He sat down on one of them with a usual old person groan, and Naruto and Sasuke sat down as well, watching him eagerly. The Sandai Mei's gentle grandfatherly look was replaced by a stern and serious one. Now, Naruto-kun, I want you to remember that this is very sensitive information, and that your parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, and even your great-great-grandparents, had enemies that would love to kill you simply out of spite. Therefore, I would like you two to keep this information to yourselves, until I deem you strong enough to protect yourself. Is that clear? Yes Jiji. Naruto said, and Sasuke nodded in agreement. Very well. Your mother, Naruto-kun, was Yuzumaki Kishina, a member of the great Yuzumaki clan of Yuzashiagakur no Sado, a now destroyed village situated on an island to the east of Fire Country. This clan was known for their great proficiency with sealing techniques and their longevity. She was an amazingly strong woman and very hot-tempered. The Sandai Mei paused for a moment and then gave a small chuckle. In her youth, she was teased in the ninja academy because of her round face and red hair. The children took to calling her tomato. Naruto gave an audible snort, and Sasuke had to suppress a smirk, knowing that was the kind of name Naruto would have come up with for someone like that. The Sandai Mei hummed and put a hand on his chin, rubbing it thoughtfully. Of course, that all changed when she started pummeling those who teased her, prompting the children to call her the red hot blooded habanero. Naruto tensed, and Sasuke knew his friend well enough to know that Naruto had suddenly decided not to go name-calling anymore, unless the name Kali actually deserved it. Well, what about my dad? Naruto asked, shaking off the horrible thought of being pummeled by an angry Redeed. Was he a super cool ninja, or something? Oh, he was super cool, alright, the Sandai Mei said with a nod. Your father. Your father is the main reason why your true heritage was kept hidden from you. In the last great shinobi war, he made a great enemy out of Iowa. He was the man who would one day rise to become the Yandai Mei Hokage of Konoha, Namikaze Minato. Sasuke felt his jaw muscles slacken, and his jaw dropped in shock. 
Glancing to his right, he saw that Naruto had the same reaction, staring at the Sandai Mei in open shock. Am I? My old man was. That's right, Naruto-kun, your father was the Yandai Mei Hokage, who I now suspect to have been adopted. I believe he may have actually been Tsunade's biological son. The reason why I haven't told you, or anyone else, about this. Is that you are, I'm sorry for saying this, a loud mouth, Naruto-kun. Sasuke couldn't suppress a smirk at seeing Naruto twitch in indignation at hearing that. Naruto-kun, if I had told you, then you would have screamed it out to whoever would listen at every chance you had. This would have been brought to Iwa's attention, and they may have tried to kidnap you. TCH. Naruto crossed his arms and pouted. I suppose. However, I didn't want to keep it from you any longer. Now, you are going to need training. There is a man here in Konoha who is quite proficient at using Mokuten Ninjutsu. And no, Naruto-kun, he is not a senju, the sand I may added at seeing Naruto's face brightening. He was experimented on at a young age and had shot Isama's genes implanted in him by a criminal of this village. He is currently serving in the Anbu forces, but I'm going to recall him to be your instructor when it comes to Mokuten Ninjutsu. Naruto grinned widely at that. Thanks a lot, Jiji. He exclaimed, then turned to Sasuke let's both become super powerful, yeah. Ha. Huh. Sasuke scoffed, smirking. As if I'd let you become stronger than me, you fool. The Sandai Mei stared intently at the two children for a while. Then, his eyes closed as he gave a bright smile, chuckling softly. Naruto twitched, and a disgusted look appeared on his face. Boy, Jiji. Why are you smiling like that? Are you a pedophile? It was the Sandai Mei's turn to twitch. Naruto. Today's the day, eh? HN. Naruto and Sasuke were heading for the Ninja Academy. Four and a half years had passed since that day when they discovered Naruto's heritage, and everything had been proceeding according to plan. Naruto and Sasuke spent every day studying or training, or both. However, because of how the teams were sorted, Naruto had stuck with the plan and pretended to be a nobody in class, getting barely passing grades. It had been difficult, though, to get worse grades than Nara Shikamaru. That boy was a genius, but too lazy to lift a pen. Therefore, his grades should have been the poorest, but since they were the same as Naruto's, the blonde had to take drastic measures by adding poor attendance to the list. This had earned him the position of dead last. The two were dressed sharply enough, Naruto wearing a pair of black sandals, black ninja pants with a shuriken holster and a kunai holster strapped to his right leg, and a loose, long-sleeved black ninja shirt that had been rolled up to just below his elbows, revealing the sleeves of the mesh shirt he wore underneath. Under the shirt, which had a fur collar much like that of the venerable Nidaime Hokage, over the mesh, Naruto wore plate armor. He also had two kunai pouches behind his back and a black three-inch wide bracelet on each wrist. Sasuke wore black sandals, black ninja pants with two shuriken holsters on his right leg, a black muscle shirt over a mesh shirt, under plate armor, which was hidden by a black long-sleeved shirt, complete with the trademark high collar of the Achiha and the Achiha clan crest on the back. He had only one kunai pouch, which was on the left side of his back, as a black chikudo was tucked into his red obi behind his back on his right side. He had identical bracelets on his own wrists. My awesome score in the upcoming exam won't change my overall grade, will it? Naruto asked curiously, and Sasuke shook his head. No, the exam is just to show that you can do what they want you to do, the Ichiha said. His voice was warmer than it had once been, but it was only like that when he was talking to Naruto, or whoever else he felt had earned his respect, such as the Sandai Mei Hokage, and Naruto's teacher, who went by the codename Yamato. Heh, then it'll be good to show these punks how good I really am. Naruto said, punching his fist into his open palm. Of course, most of the academy already knew how strong he really was. After all, Sasuke's fangirls had spied on a lot of their lighter training sessions, and even then it was intense, and since Naruto could easily keep up with Sasuke, they had figured out that he was just acting in class and had naturally spread the word. Sasuke blinked once and looked at Naruto. Who is it this time? I'm not molding chakra right now, Naruto said, crossing his arms. So I haven't the slightest. Then mold some. Naruto's left eyebrow slowly rose, and he turned his head to look at Sasuke, who sighed. Please mold some. Naruto nodded and closed his eyes, activating his keen chakra sensing abilities. He located all five people who were following them and identified their chakra signatures. The usual fangirls on R6 and on the rooftop at 4 o'clock is Hinata. Hinata. Haven't had her following us around for about a week, Sasuke commented. It was widely known that Hinata was probably the only girl in the academy who wasn't a fangirl. Instead, she was an admirer. She didn't admire Sasuke, however, but instead it was Naruto who she focused her attention on. 
She had told Kiba, who had told Shikamaru, who had told Ino, who had told Sasuke that she admired Naruto for his determination and will to never give up, even when looked down upon by the general populace of the village. She greatly admired his character, but was too shy to talk to him. Still suck at the bunshin, though. Naruto muttered, bringing the topic back to the exam. Dunno how I'm gonna pull that one off. Way ahead of you, Sasuke said confidently. Don't worry, you'll pass with flying colors. The Hokage said that the Bunshin is the most basic of clones, and that's the minimum requirement for graduating. Sasuke didn't need to say anything else, as Naruto made the realization right away. Ah, so any clone will do. I'll avoid the Moku Bunshin, Wood Clone, and just go with the Kage Bunshin, Shadow Clone. Don't want to reveal my special skills too quickly. And so, there they stood, in the Ninja Academy. Or rather, they were outside. Currently, they were doing the physical portion of the exam. Needless to say, Naruto shocked the hell out of Iruka when he aced the kunai and shuriken throwing, beat everyone in the stamina portion, and fought Sasuke to a standstill in a spar. Naruto even did well in Jinjutsu, even though it wasn't his area of expertise. Despite his terrible skill with them, compared to his nin and tojutsu, he could still cast Jinjutsu that were above average in power, not something just anyone could do, and he could identify and cancel them no problem. Next came the ninjutsu portion. Naruto was almost disappointed with the fact that only a Henge, Bunshin, and a Kawarimi needed to be performed to pass. Alright, Naruto, just create two fully functional Bunshin, and you'll pass, Iruka said, looking very pleasantly surprised at Naruto's performance. Naruto nodded and put his hands in a cross seal. Without speaking the words, he created two Kage Bunshin, which made the Chuanin teacher's eyes widen in surprise. These are. Kage Bunshin. Ajiji says that my chakra stores are too big for me to create a normal bunshin, Naruto said with a shrug. W well, you pass, Naruto. Congratulations. Iruka said, picking up one of the hit I ate on the table in front of him and handing it to Naruto, who shook his head. It's cool, I've got my own, he said and reached into his kunai pouch, taking out a scroll and opening it. He placed his hand on a seal in the scroll, and in a poof of smoke, a grey hapuri with a kanoha symbol engraved on the forehead appeared, landing in Naruto's hand. It was old and scratched here and there, and Aruka's eyes widened. And Naruto, is that? The Nidai Maze Hapuri, Naruto said with a nod as he put the scroll in his kunai pouch again, before putting on the Hapuri. Yeah, the Jiji gave it to me. Well, later, Sensei. With that, Naruto left the classroom, finding Sasuke waiting for him outside, already wearing his hit I ate. They didn't need to speak. Instead, Naruto just grinned and pointed with his thumb up at his Hapuri. Big surprise there, Sasuke said, looking bored. So, do we eat and then train, or do we train and then eat? Let's go eat first, yeah. Celebrate our graduation, Naruto said, still grinning as he and Sasuke walked off. Starting today, all of you are real shinobi. Hiruka said happily to the gathered graduates the next day, smiling proudly. But you are still genin. The hard journey that lies ahead has just started. Now you will soon get missions to help the village. So today, we will create the three-man teams, and each of you will have a jounin sensei. You will follow your sensei's instructions in order to successfully complete your missions. Now, we tried to balance each team's strength, the Chuanin said as he looked down at the clipboard in his hand. Alright, team 1. Naruto, who was sitting next to Sasuke, nudged his best friend with his elbow. Hey, did you find out which girl got the highest score? I think Hinata and Sakura were at the top, Sasuke said quietly, staring out the window. I couldn't find out which one, though. I hope it's Hinata. It'd be nice to have the girl of the team frowning over someone other than me. If it is Hinata, we're going to have to do something about her shyness. Agreed. Okay, next is Team 7. Hi Uga Hinata. Yuzumaki Naruto. And Ichiha Sasuke. Naruto and Sasuke both got identical smirks on their faces and gave each other a high five. Out of the corner of his eye, Naruto saw that Hinata had gone beat red in her seat, her eyes wide as saucers. Hey, Hiruka sensei Shikamaru spoke up, sounding bored as usual. Aren't the team supposed to be balanced? Why are you placing the three strongest on the same team? Because, Shikamaru, though it's widely known that Naruto is as strong as Sasuke, we selected the teams based on grades, and Naruto came in dead last. I believe the two knew about how the teams would be decided, after all. The smirks on Naruto and Sasuke's faces said it all. Alright, next is Team 8, which will consist of Haruno Sakura, Inuzuka Kiba, and Aburam Shino, Haruka said, continuing to read from his clipboard. Team 9 is still in rotation from last year, and Team 10 will be Amanaka Ino, Nara Shikamaru, and Akamichi Chaoji. He cleared his throat, then smiled. Okay, this afternoon we'll introduce your Jounin Sensei. Until then, take a break. Hinata. Naruto called as everyone rose from their seats. 
The Hyuga heiress jumped at being addressed by her crush and spun to face him, completely red-faced still. Sasuke and I are gonna grab some lunch, you wanna come? I I I Hinata started poking her fingers together, ducking her head down, which made Naruto and Sasuke share a look with each other, eyebrows raised. S sure, Naruto come. Dango today, then. Naruto asked Sasuke, who nodded as they walked up to Hinata. Dango alright with you, Hinata. I it's fine. Hinata muttered, still keeping her head down. Naruto looked to Sasuke, who shrugged. The newly made Team 7 headed to a nearby Dango shop, where Naruto and Sasuke each ordered 10 sticks, and Hinata ordered 5. You didn't pack lunch. Naruto asked Hinata as they waited for their food. Come to think of it, I've never seen you bring lunch. No, I go back home too. To eat lunch. Hinata said quietly. W what about you two? Sasuke prefers Dango, but he can't make it, and me. Well, the last time I tried cooking, Sasuke and I had to battle the ensuing creation to the death. Hinata giggled at that, especially at the look on Sasuke's face when he thought back to the monster stew. A stew shouldn't have been able to grow tentacles, damn it. So, Hinata, Naruto said as their order arrived, watching as Hinata jumped at being addressed. Why don't you give us a rundown of your abilities, eh? Sasuke and I know each other's skills well enough, but we have no idea about you. Oh, I. I'm kind of. Weak. Hinata mumbled shyly, ducking her head. Yeah, we don't buy that, Sasuke said simply. If you were weak, you wouldn't have scored top of the class. How about we go first? Give small introductions. He said, looking to Naruto for confirmation and getting a nod. Alright, I'm Ichiha Sasuke I specialize in ninjutsu and jinjutsu. My chakra control is excellent, and my strength is above average. I don't have the best stamina, but it's not lousy, either. My preferred jutsu are Katen Jutsu. Uzumaki Naruto, Naruto said, raising his hand unnecessarily in greeting. I specialize in ninjutsu and tojutsu. I'm also a very accomplished sensor. My chakra control is good, but could be better, and my strength is amazing. I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed, but I get by, my stamina is monstrous, and my preferred jutsu are doten and suiten jutsu, and the secret type. Best secret type? Hinata asked, blinking at the grin on Naruto's face. To be revealed at a later date, Naruto said, nodding. Now you. You um. I'm Hayuga Hinata. I I guess I specialize in tojutsu. My Byakugan makes me a good sensor, I suppose. My chakra control is excellent, like Sasuke Kun's, but I'm kind of weak physically. My stamina. Is also not that great. And my preferred jutsu are my clan jutsu. So, only one of us has any focus on Jinjutsu, Sasuke said, crossing his arms and closing his eyes in thought. I know you have a pretty low opinion of yourself, Hinata, but I need you to think carefully about your skills. Do you have anything else that could contribute? W well. I do make. My own medicine. Alright, that's great. Naruto said with a bright grin. So you lacked as our support and can also patch up Sasuke and me when we rush into battle headfirst, yeah? Sasuke and I, Sasuke corrected, which got him a glare from Naruto. Shut up, you know it all. Anada giggled softly at their antics, and even more so during their meal, when Naruto demonstrated his four-in-one technique, where he tilted his head back and put an entire dango stick down his throat like a sword swallower, chomped his teeth down on it, and pulled it out, clean, and swallowing the dumplings whole. Ugh. Naruto muttered afterward, clutching his stomach. Those always feel too big going down. It's like they swell to twice their size as soon as I swallow them. Sasuke chuckled softly, while Hinata giggled. When the food had been devoured, the trio got up and headed back to the academy, where they waited. And waited. And waited. Naruto. Sasuke said after two hours of waiting. The blonde was sitting at his desk, his eyes closed. Someone's finally approaching, Naruto said grumpily. Damn bastard, making us wait. Way to make a first impression. The door opened, revealing a man wearing the traditional Jounin uniform, along with a mask that covered the lower half of his face, and a headband that was pulled down to cover his left eye. His hair, gray, looked as though it was defying gravity. He raised a gloved hand in greeting. Yo, boys and girl. I'll be your Jounin sensei, he spoke lazily, then looked around and thought. Hmm. This place is a bit stuffy. Let's go up to the roof, yeah. With that, he left the classroom, and Naruto, Sasuke and Hinata, looking at each other strangely, shrugged and followed him up to the roof, where they sat down in front of the man, who was leaning back against the railing. Well, let's begin with introducing ourselves, the man said, his arms crossed. Um. What do you want to know, sensei? Hinata asked softly. How about your likes, dislikes, your dreams for the future, and things like that? The Jounin said with a shrug. How about you go first? Sasuke asked. Yeah, you look. Very suspicious. Naruto muttered, narrowing his eyes. Oh, me. 
Well, my name is Hata Kakashi. I have no desire to tell you my likes and dislikes. Dreams for the future. Hmm. And I have lots of hobbies. All three members of Team 7 sweat dropped at the lame introduction. Kakashi was unperturbed, however, and just smiled and pointed at Naruto. Alright, now it's your turn. Start from the right. Uzumaki Naruto, as everyone knows, Naruto said, saluting Kakashi. I like training, the few friends I have, nature, and meditating. I don't like idiots or warmongers. As for my hobbies. Well, my only hobby is training, I guess. And my dream is to become Hokage and surpass all my predecessors. Good, good. Next. My name is Ichiha Sasuke. I like training, swords, and meditating. My dislikes mostly consist of idiots and a certain man. My hobby is training and my dream. I don't really have dreams, but rather goals. The resurrection of the Ichiha clan, to kill that certain man, and to become Hokage. Though that last one is gonna have to remain a dream, Naruto supplied with a grin, while Sasuke gave a scoff of amusement. Kakashi was staring at the two of them with something akin to warmth in his eye. To think that those two would become friends. I think this would be good for them he thought, then looked at Hinata. Okay, you're last. You um. My name is. Hi Uga Hinata. I like Zenzai and cinnamon rolls. And. Hinata stopped and blushed hard. She shook her head, deciding to leave that last part out. I I dislike those who. Who look down on others. My hobby is pressing flowers. And my dream is. To become a high Uga worthy of being the head of the clan, and to abolish the cage bird seal from the branch family. Bakashi hummed softly as he looked over his three genin. Then, he nodded. Okay. That's it for the introductions. Tomorrow, we'll start our duties as shinobi. First of all, we're going to do something with just the four of us. W what is it, Kakashi-sensei? Hinata asked softly. Survival training, Kakashi said seriously. Survival training. Sasuke repeated curiously. We did enough of that in the academy. This isn't a normal training. This time, I'm your opponent, Kakashi said, making everyone's eyes widen. He chuckled softly. What's so funny? Naruto asked with a slight glare, still a little ticked that they found out nothing about the man. Oh, well, it's just that when I tell you this, you guys are going to freak out. Just spit it out, damn it, don't keep us in suspense. Of the 27 graduates, only 9 will be chosen to become genin. The rest will be sent back to the academy. This training is a very difficult exam with a failure rate of over 66%. Everyone's eyes went even wider than before at that, and Kakashi just laughed and pointed at them. I told you you'd freak out. Then what the hell was graduation for? Naruto growled out. Oh, that. That was just to select those who have the potential to become genin. It takes more than a couple of jutsu to become one, after all, Kakashi said. Anyway, tomorrow you have to show your real skills on the training ground. Bring all the shinobi tools you have. Oh, and skip breakfast, or you might throw up. As his genin once more went wide-eyed, Kakashi took three pieces of paper out of his kunai pouch and held them out to them. The details are on this paper. And don't be late tomorrow. Good morning, everyone. Naruto said happily as the three genin met in training area 7 the next day. None of them looked tired, which was good, and none of them looked hungry, either, which was better. As Sasuke had said earlier, it was better to throw up than fight on an empty stomach. I'm guessing our sensei is going to be late again, Sasuke said, his hands in his pockets. Hinata nodded. I detect a pattern emerging. She mumbled softly. Well, better make good use of the time we have, Naruto said as he sat down in a lotus position, his eyes drifting shut. I'll keep a lookout for him, and Sasuke, you come up with some good battle plans. Sasuke nodded and sat down, humming. Alright. Hinata, you are proficient in the Juikin, gentle fist, right? I am not as good as my father or my sister, but. I guess. Sasuke was quiet for a moment, his eyes still closed. Then, he spoke up, alright, listen up. I'm sure we're all very strong, but none of us can win against a Jounin alone. Therefore, we're going to have to work together if we want to beat him. If it comes down to a fight, which it most likely will, Naruto will be acting as support. Then Naruto-kun will. Hinata asked, blinking. But. I thought you said. I would be support. I did say that, but Naruto has special jutsu in this case perfect for distracting and capturing Kakashi from a distance. While Naruto is distracting him, you and I will come at him into jutsu. I'll go high, you go low. If you can, target is nuts. Naruto gave an audible snort at that and opened his eyes to see Hinata turning beet red again. Wow, that's kinda cruel, Sasuke, Naruto said in amusement. Are you sure you want to put Kakashi team through that? Punishment for being late, Sasuke said simply. I do, of course, have other plans as well. I want you to memorize them perfectly. Now, plan B. 
They waited for another two hours before Kakashi finally arrived and he had the audacity to wave happily at them as if he was right on time. Good morning, everyone. You're late, team. Naruto exclaimed angrily. Isn't that unbecoming of a jounin? Ah, so sorry. See, a black cat crossed my path, and... Stop lying, you're wasting our time, Sasuke said coldly, his arms crossed, which made Kakashi sweat drop. How serious? He thought with a sigh. He took off his backpack and set it down next to the three wooden poles in the clearing, before fishing out an alarm clock and setting it down on the pole. Okay, it's set for noon, he announced, taking two bells out of his kunai pouch and holding them out. Here are two bells. Your task is to take these from me before the time's up. Those who don't have a bell by noon gets no lunch. I'll not only tie you to one of those stumps, but I'll also eat right in front of you. Bakashi didn't see the hungry, devastated faces he had been expecting to see. Instead, the two boys of the group were glaring at him, and the girl was staring shyly at the ground. Kakashi blinked slowly, but then shook his head and continued. You only have to get one bell. There are only two, so one of you will definitely be tied to the stump. And. The person who doesn't take a bell fails. So at least one of you will be sent back to the academy, Kakashi said, smirking at the shocked looks on their faces. If you want, you can use your weapons. You won't succeed if you don't come at me with the intent to kill. Any questions? Not getting any questions, Kakashi nodded and took a deep breath, his eye closed. All right, then. Begin. With that, all four of them dashed off. DCH. Naruto uttered as he hid in a tree, a disgusted look on his face. Pitting his students against not only himself, but each other as well. Yeah. Came Sasuke's voice from behind him as his friend landed on the same branch. This guy's something else. And from what the rumor mill says, he's not someone to toy with, either. So, what do you think? I think the same thing you do, Naruto said, as though it was obvious. Neither of us wants to be sent back to the academy, but it'd be a shitty thing for us to do to team up and let Hinata fend for herself. Besides, she's probably the only girl I can stand. So, we can either have one of us go back to the academy, or Hinata. Sasuke muttered, a smirk appearing on his face. That Kakashi Yero. That kind of guy just pisses me off. So, what do we do? Naruto asked, crossing his arms. I say we figure out a way to get all three to pass, Sasuke said, his smirk widening. And how do we do that? We steal everything he has. If Kakashi had seen the duo, he would have become very scared upon seeing the identical smirks on their faces. Meanwhile, Hinata was hiding behind a tree, her eyes closed. She was feeling devastated. Only two may pass, and everyone knew that Naruto and Sasuke were the best of friends, so there was little doubt that they would team up to defeat Kakashi, leaving Hinata to herself. Hinata couldn't help but feel so disappointed. She had finally done it. She had finally managed to end up on the same team as Naruto, and now they were going to be separated. It just wasn't fair. Yo. Hinata would have eaten in fright, had a hand not suddenly covered her mouth as she jumped. She looked over her shoulder to see that it was Naruto standing behind her and covering her mouth. Naruto. Was touching her. Naruto let out a huh. When he saw Hinata's eyes get unfocused as her face once more went beet red. Thankfully, though, she managed to keep from passing out as Naruto let go of her. Anyway, Hinata, Sasuke's already in position for plan F, Naruto said, jutting his thumb over his shoulder. You better get ready too. Be but. Hinata blinked in confusion. T there are only two bells. Naruto-kun, you should. Now, now, we're a team now, Naruto said, grinning slightly. Sasuke and I wouldn't feel right leaving you behind, so we're doing this as a team. Besides, we'll be stealing more than just the bells from that Kakashi arrow. We'll be stealing enough to pass 18 genin. Naruto winked at Hinata, then jumped off to get in position. In the meantime, Kakashi was standing in a clearing near the river running through training area 7, looking around and stretching his senses. His sense of smell could easily detect his students, and he could sense their chakra as well. Hmm. They've hidden themselves well. The most important thing for a shinobi is to be able to hide themselves, after all. They could probably hide from a Chuanin at this level. Wait. Bakashi blinked as he focused on Sasuke's chakra signature. Then, his eyes widened when he felt that it was really Naruto's. Had he created a clone and manipulated his chakra to feel like Sasuke's. The soft thump of the sandal landing on the dirt was all the warning Kakashi got before he had to duck under a swing from Sasuke's Shikudo. The Achiha kept spinning and aimed a kick at Kakashi's head, forcing the Jounin to leap away. More footsteps were heard behind him, and Kakashi leapt away yet again to avoid a Juken strike from Hinata. All three had teamed up so soon. He honestly hadn't been expecting that. Both Jenin charged at Kakashi, who dodged and dodged. Sasuke swung high with his Shikudo, and Hinata went after his abdomen with her Juken, forcing him to lean and twist without pause in order to avoid being hit. 
considering they focused on only Tajutsu and Kenjutsu, he felt it would be unfair at this point to use Ninjutsu. After all, this was partly to test their abilities. Now, Naruto. Sasuke called suddenly, and Kakashi's eye widened. The only warning he got was a slight rumbling in the ground, before wooden poles shot out of it, wrapping around his arms and legs. What? Kakashi exclaimed, his eye wide. He didn't have time to think about it, however, as Hinata reached him just then, and slammed her chakra-laced palm into his chest. Not only for Kakashi to disappear in a poof of smoke, replaced by a log. Howarimi. Sasuke muttered with a scoff. He can't have gone far. Indeed he hadn't, as just then, Kakashi blurred into view behind Naruto, who was hiding behind a pair of bushes, a kunai at his throat. Naruto's hands were in a snake seal, and Kakashi smiled at the blonde. Oh ho, Mokuten Ninjutsu, huh? Haven't seen that for a while. However, this is the end for you, Naruto. Really? Naruto asked with a smirk. In a flash, his hand was planted on the ground, and Kakashi only had a millisecond to react before a wooden spike burst out of the ground beneath him, forcing him to leap into the clearing again. He wasn't given any breathing room, as Hinata was on him in an instant. She didn't strike as fiercely or quickly as some of the high Uga Kakashi had sparred with in the past, but she was impressive nonetheless. However, he had no trouble keeping up. As he stepped back to avoid another strike, Kakashi noticed out of the corner of his eye how Sasuke had just finished a string of hand seals. Pain. Kakaku no Jutsu, Fire Element. Grand Fireball Technique. Sasuke brought his hand to his mouth and unleashed a massive fireball, sending it hurling at Kakashi and Hinata, the Jounin going wide-eyed. The Kakyu? Impossible. A Jenin shouldn't have that much chakra. And he's aiming for Hinata as well. Evidently, Sasuke had been confident that Hinata wouldn't be hurt, and so was Hinata, apparently, as she looked quite calm. Suddenly, wood burst from the ground and enveloped Hinata in a protective wooden dome, just as the fire reached them. Kakashi jumped into the air to avoid the fireball, which smashed into the wooden dome and exploded. More wooden poles burst from the ground and shot up at Kakashi, wrapping around his wrists and ankles, before forcefully yanking him down to the ground. Kakashi slammed hard into the ground on his back and grunted. Sure, he hadn't even used half his power in this bar, but still. These kids were already chewing in level. He was brought out of his musings as his three genin came walking up to him, staring down at the pinned jounin. Then, Naruto knelt next to him and grabbed the bells, tossing them to Sasuke, who gave one to Hinata. That's some self-sacrificing you're showing there, Naruto, Kakashi spoke calmly, despite the situation he was in. Are you sure you want to be sent back to the academy? I won't be sent back, Naruto said with a grin as he grabbed Kakashi's kunai pouch and removed it from his person, opening it and rummaging through it. Either all of us pass, or no one. So, I'm going to see if you have anything worth threatening in order to pass us. Kakashi's eye widened to the size of a saucer when he saw Naruto fish out his precious book, Itcha Itcha Paradise. Naruto must have caught his reaction because his grin widened as he wiggled it at Sasuke. Look, Sasuke, our new teacher likes reading dirty books. How about you set it on fire, yeah? That sounds like an amazing idea, Naruto, Sasuke said, a cruel smirk on his face. You can't do that. Kakashi exclaimed. Fine, fine, you all pass. Now let me go and give me my book. Heh, Naruto uttered as he put the book back in the kunai pouch and dropped it onto Kakashi's stomach before putting his hand in a half-ram seal. The wood holding Kakashi loosened and sank back into the earth, allowing Kakashi to sit up. Well, you would have passed anyway, Kakashi said as he stood up, refastening his kunai pouch. This test was designed to see if you could figure out the hidden meaning behind it. Hidden meaning. Hinata mumbled, and Sasuke hummed, crossing his arms. You pitted the three of us against not only you, but each other as well. There was no way we were going to get a bell on our own, so we had to team up. So. Self-sacrifice. That's right, Kakashi said with a nod. The hidden answer to this test is teamwork. I wanted to see if you could work together as a team, and I wanted to see if one of you would be willing to sacrifice themselves for the others. Well that didn't work out quite as I had planned, you got the gist of it. Duties are done by the team. Of course, individual strength is also important to a ninja, but what's even more important is teamwork. Kakashi looked over his three genin, and a bright smile appeared on his face. Naruto, Sasuke, even if you two are best friends, you still didn't leave Hinata behind in order to get the bells for yourselves. That shows that you have character, compassion, honor. You will be risking your lives in these duties. If a hostage is taken, you will have tough choices to make, and you may not always make the right one. Kakashi sighed and gestured for them to follow him as he walked over to where the poles were, behind which was a large stone with hundreds of names carved into it. Look at this, the numerous names carved on this stone. These are ninjas who are recognized as heroes of the village, Kakashi said, staring softly at the stone. 
But. They aren't just normal heroes. Why do I get the feeling you're about to say something depressing? Naruto muttered. These ninjas are all heroes who died on duty, Kakashi explained. This is a memorial. My best friend's name is also carved here. You guys are the first team I've ever passed. Everyone else would just do whatever I told them. They were all just morons who only thought about themselves and about doing what I ordered. A ninja must see underneath the underneath. Those who break the rules and codes of the ninja world are called trash. But, you know what? Those who don't take care of their comrades are lower than trash. I want you all to remember that. DCH. Sasuke muttered. Here I thought I had you figured out, then you go say something cool like that. Bakashi smiled brightly and flashed them a thumbs up. That ends the training. All of you pass. Okay, starting tomorrow, Team 7 will begin its duties. Alright. Naruto exclaimed with a wide grin, pumping his fist into the air. My climb to the top starts here. Ah, my precious torch Anne. I missed you so much. The wife of the fire daimyo, Madame Shijimi, yelled out as she hugged her cat tightly in the mission's office, despite the cat looking like it was choking to death. You had me so worried, my little baby. No wonder it ran away. Naruto muttered, three scratches across the bridge of his nose, and many more on his hands. Sasuke had three on his cheek, three on his neck, and about as many on his hands as Naruto. I would too. H.N. Kind of makes you pity it. Hinata mumbled softly, having no scratches on her. Now. Kakashi's Team 7, the Sandai Mei said as he was looking over the documents in front of him, your next duty is. Hmm. Babysitting an elder's grandson, shopping in the neighboring village, and help with the potato digging. You can also. I'm gonna stop you right there, Jiji, Naruto said suddenly. Everyone save for his team stared at him in utter shock for daring to interrupt the Hokage. You and I both know that this team is stronger than any genin team you have. We shouldn't be doing this crap. I agree, Sasuke said, crossing his arms. I think this is an incredible waste of valuable resources. After all, besides team training, coming up with strategies and combinations, all they had been doing since graduating was D-ranked missions. You idiots. Haruka barked, sitting next to the Sandai Mei, who just sighed. You're just rookies. Everyone starts off with the simple duties and work their way up. I don't give a crap. We're not everyone. Naruto barked back. We get these crap missions I wouldn't even force academy students to do. This is not ninja work. Suddenly, Kakashi's fist bopped Naruto on the head, accompanied by the Jounin saying, Quiet, you. Naruto-kun, it seems I have to explain to you what these duties are all about, the Sandai Mei said, puffing on his pipe. Listen, every day. We get all kinds of requests from people, ranging from babysitting to assassination, we rank the missions, and blah, 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 Naruto said, his arms crossed. But you've told us that Genin get both D and C ranked missions. I know we're fresh out of the academy, but you know as well as I do that we can handle a C-rank. Right, Sasuke, Hinata. H.N. I, I think so. I apologize. Kakashi mumbled, scratching the back of his head in embarrassment. The Sandai Mei, however, looked thoughtful and hummed while puffing on his pipe. He interlaced his fingers in front of his face and smirked. Very well. If you want it that much, I'll give you a C-rank, and we'll see how you do. It's a protection mission of a certain individual, the Sandai Mei announced, which visibly surprised Kakashi and Hinata, while Naruto and Sasuke smirked. I'll introduce the client now. Hey. Will you come in here? The door to the mission office lit open, revealing an old man who, judging by the scars on his hands, must have been a carpenter or something like that. In his hand was a sake bottle, and he took a swig from it as he looked them over. What's this? They're all a bunch of super brats, the man said, a drunken blush on his face. Especially the girl. She looks like she couldn't hurt a fly. Are you really a ninja? Anada flinched and ducked her head. Seeing that she wasn't about to give a retort, Naruto and Sasuke came to her defense, glaring heatedly at him. But kill you five times over before you could even blink, you old fart, Sasuke said coldly, and Naruto looked at Kakashi. Sensei, can I show him? Filling the person we're supposed to protect would cause us to fail the mission, Kakashi said simply, but Naruto didn't need to show him. They'd gotten their point across, judging by how the old man barely suppressed a flinch. He coughed into his fist. Anyway, I am the super bridge builder, Tazuna. I expect you to provide me super protection until I get back to my country and complete the bridge. And so, later found Naruto, Sasuke, and Hinata walked toward the East Kanoha Gate, packed and ready. Naruto and Sasuke had everything in a scroll each, and Naruto had sealed Hinata's pack into another one, so she didn't have to carry anything. This is a C rank, so the worst we might face is bandits, Sasuke said as they walked. However, I want none of you to let down your guard. Keep your senses sharp for anything out of the norm. Hinata. Hinata jumped at being addressed directly, and quickly answered with a, why yes. 
During our journey to Wave Country, I want you to activate your Byakugan at regular intervals and scout the surrounding area. Hey, all right. Naruto. Hmm. Naruto uttered, raising an eyebrow. I don't want you to go lazy and stop molding chakra. I want you sensing the entire time. Your sensing ability is the best I've ever seen, and it doesn't eat more chakra than it takes for you to regenerate, so you can't complain about that. Don't slack off, keep sensing. Yeah, yeah. TCH, you've taken some kind of captain position, or something. Getting a bit ahead of yourself, are you, Sasuke-kun? The Hokage is the leader of the village. I need training, Sasuke said simply, which made Naruto twitch. Yeah, right. The one who's gonna be Hokage is me. Eh, in your dreams, maybe. Why you? I think you both have good chances of becoming Hokage. Hinata mumbled softly, which caused the two genin to stop blaring at each other, instead turning their heads to look at her. Hinata looked a bit startled to be getting so much attention, but gulped and continued. Why you both have such strength, despite your young age. And you both have your unique sets of leadership skills. S. Oz, K. Kun. I think Naruto Kun has. Has just as good a chance to become Hokage. As you. Hinata, finished now, ducked her head, as though expecting Sasuke to react unfavorably to what she had just said. Therefore, he no doubt surprised her when he just gave a soft laugh of amusement. Of course, he said, crossing his arms. He wouldn't be worthy of being my rival if he couldn't keep up with me, after all. But thanks for those kind words, Hinata, Naruto said with a grin, slinging an arm around her shoulders. Seriously, though, we need to do something about this shyness of yours, don't you think? I am not. Shy. Hinata mumbled, beat red at having Naruto touching her. I just. I. Ah, you're gonna try to convince me that fish can fly, too. Naruto said, still grinning widely. He flashed her a thumbs up. Don't worry, though. Stick with us, and in a couple of weeks, you'll either be a happy-go-lucky jockester like me, or a cool, brooding type like Sasuke. Go with the jockester path, though. One Sasuke is enough. Boy, are you saying I'm annoying? Sasuke asked with a slight glare. Oh ho, not at all, Sasuke-kun. Funny how you would jump to that conclusion, though. Why, you? Hinata giggled softly at their antics, which made Naruto grin wider. They rendezvoused with Kakashi and Tezuna at the gate and then set off toward wave country. As Sasuke had suggested, Naruto started molding chakra and spread out his senses the second they left Konoha, and it was a good thing he did, because he immediately picked up on two chakra sources in the trees to their left. He glanced at Sasuke, who caught his eye. They had long since reached the point where they could tell what the other was trying to tell them from simply looking into each other's eyes. Sasuke's eyes narrowed slightly, and he gave a small, barely noticeable nod, before moving over to Hinata. Hinata, don't use your Byakugan, he whispered so quietly that no even Kakashi would be able to hear them. We have a tail, and we don't want to spook them. Understood, Hinata whispered back. Sasuke was shocked to have seen her turn so serious, not at all her usual, shy self. No, he did see that she was the same, but she forced those traits back through sheer force of will. She looked at Tizuna. You um. Tizuna-san. What? You are. From wave country, right? What about it? Do you have a ninja village? It was Kakashi who answered, no, not in wave country. Most other countries have them, but wave country is a bit too small for it. Heh, don't worry, though. These won't be any ninja combat in a C-rank mission. Sasuke pushed Chakra into his eyes as they passed a puddle in the road, then turned to look at Naruto, who nodded back at him as they kept walking, Kakashi bringing up the rear. Suddenly, a ninja with a horned Kiri headband came flying over Kakashi, a bladed chain connected to his clawed gauntlet. He landed between Kakashi and the Jenin and Tazuna as the chain wrapped around the Jounin, tightening. Behind Kakashi stood another Kiri ninja with an identical gauntlet on his hand, which the chain was connected to. What? Kakashi uttered as the two ninja both said, one down. And pulled the chain. Kakashi was torn to pieces by the chain, making Tazuna go wide-eyed, along with Hinata. Sasuke, Sharingan burning in his eyes, one Tomo in the left and two in the right, looked at her. Hinata, protect Azuna. He ordered, while well, Naruto was already flashing through hand seals. Oden. Doryuden, Earth Element. Earth Dragon Projectile. Naruto called out as a dragon head made of earth rose from the ground and turned to one of the Kiri ninja, opening its mouth and spitting high-velocity mud projectiles at him. The ninja jumped, while Sasuke also flashed through seals. Pain. Dukaku no Jutsu. He called out, spewing a massive ball of flame at the other ninja, who dodged, yanking the chain connecting the two, and in doing so pulling him out of the way of the mud projectiles. The fireball engulfed the chain, instantly melting it and separating the two ninja, who split off, circling around Naruto and Sasuke in order to head for Tazuna, which caused Hinata to stand protectively in front of him. Oten. Doruhiki, Earth Element. 
Earth style wall. Naruto called out after flashing through another chain of seals, slamming his hands down on the ground. One of the ninja, who was coming at Tazuna from behind, suddenly found himself stopped rather abruptly as he ran straight into the earth well that shot up in front of him. As soon as his head bounced off the wall, Naruto put his hand in a snake seal. Mokuten. Sashiki no Jutsu, wood element. Cutting technique. Naruto called as a wooden blade sprouted from his hand. He spun and flung the blade at the dazed Kiri ninja, piercing him in the shoulder. Gotcha. Naruto proclaimed triumphantly, putting his hand in a half-ram seal and focusing his chakra. Sadatsu, grow. The Kiri ninja's eyes widened when the wood inside his body suddenly sprouted five thick spikes that extended to burst out of his body in a shower of blood, piercing many vital organs in the process. Naruto's eyes widened at seeing an actual person be hit by that jutsu. Up until now, all he had practiced on was straw practice dummies. There was so much blood. Well done, Naruto, came Kakashi's voice, making him look toward Tazuna to see that Sasuke had moved to stand protectively in front of Hinata, and Kakashi was standing in front of him, holding the other Kiri ninja, who was unconscious, in a headlock. You guys reacted much better than I would have believed. Kakashi made to turn to Tazuna, but he stopped and looked at Naruto, noticing that the blonde's hands were shaking slightly. Well, it's to be expected. It was his first kill Kakashi thought, his gaze softening. But to do it at that age. I'll have to talk to him about it later. Kakashi turned to Tazuna and gave him a very serious look. Tazuna-san. Tazuna visibly flinched. Why yes. I need to talk to you. Within moments, the Kiri ninja had been tied to a tree, and judging from the fact that he was glaring daggers at Naruto, he was awake. This guy is a Chunin rank ninja, one of the demon brothers of Kurigakur no Sato. They are ninjas known to keep fighting no matter what. How did you read our movements? The demon brother asked Kakashi. Not even your genin were taken by surprise. On a sunny day like this, when it hasn't rained in days, a water puddle shouldn't exist, Kakashi said simply. Besides, Naruto is a very accomplished sensor. He no doubt detected you from the moment you started following us and alerted his teammates. Why did you let the brats fight when you knew that? Tazuna asked. If I had wanted to, I could have killed these two instantly, but there was something I needed to find out. Who the target was for these two. What do you mean? Tazuna asked. Meaning, were they after you or one of us? We haven't heard that there are ninjas after you. Our mission was simply to protect you from thieves or gangs, Kakashi said, narrowing his eye at Tazuna. This has now become at least a B-rank mission. This was supposed to be simple protection until you completed the bridge. Azuna was quiet, and a sweat drop was visibly rolling down his temple. If it was known that ninja were after you. This mission would have been an expensive B-rank. I'm sure you have a reason, but it causes problems when you lie about the mission details. We are now operating outside of our duties. Um. A are we ready for? For this type of mission? Hinata asked, gulping. I suppose that, at this point, it would be customary for us to abandon the mission, Kakashi said slowly, nodding more to himself than to the others. Sensei. Tazuna spoke up suddenly, catching Kakashi's attention. I have to talk to you. It's about this mission. You're right, this job is most likely outside of your duties. It turns out that a super dangerous man is after my life. Super dangerous man. Kakashi repeated, raising his only visible eyebrow. Who? You've probably at least heard his name before, Tazuna said quietly. The wealthy shipping magnate. A man named Gatu. A Gatu, from that Gatu company? Kakashi asked, his eye widening in surprise. He's said to be one of the world's few extremely wealthy people. Yes. Officially, he runs a large shipping company, Tazuna said with a nod. But, secretly, he sells drugs and other illegal items using ninja and gang members to take over businesses and countries. He's a super nasty man. It was about a year ago when he set his eyes on the wave country. Through money and violence, he quickly took control of the country's shipping industry. Batu now has a monopoly on all business traffic in the country. The only thing he has to fear now is the completion of the bridge. And? Because you are building the bridge to the mainland. He won't hold a monopoly anymore. Hinata concluded, to which Tazuna nodded. So, those ninja were hired by Gatu? Sasuke asked, and Tazuna nodded. But what I don't understand is. If you knew ninja could be after you, why did you hide that fact when you hired us? Kakashi wanted to know. Tazuna sighed. The wave country is super poor. Even the daimyo has no money. Of course, we don't have much money, either. Not enough for the expensive B-rank mission. Well. If you quit the mission now, I will definitely be killed. But. Don't worry about it. Tazuna said with a bright smile on his face. If I die, my cute ten-year-old grandson will just cry for a few days. Oh, yeah, and my daughter will live a sad, sad life, hating Kanohan Ninja forever. But it won't be your fault. Not at all. 
The Kashi twitched at that, scratching the plate on his hit I ate. Then, he sighed and smiled at Tazuna, saying, well, I guess we have no choice. We will protect you, at least until you get back to your country. Azuna smiled and thanked them profusely, but they could all see the victorious glint in his eyes. They set off, Kakashi in the front, Hinata and Tazuna in the middle, and Naruto and Sasuke bringing up the rear. Hey, Sasuke said softly, looking down at Naruto's hands. You're shaking. Still a bit shocked, I guess. Naruto mumbled, taking deep breaths. It's not like I've actually killed a man before. It was you or him, Sasuke said simply. Don't beat yourself up about it. Well, I know that, but my body doesn't seem to want to listen. It's not good to be shaking, especially now that we know that enemies are going to attack. Give me a minute and I'll be fine, Naruto said, a small grin on his face. The group managed to make their way into wave country without encountering any more enemies. However, Naruto, Sasuke, and Hinata were always on alert, their senses sharp. As Naruto had said, his shaking had stopped and he was ready for anything. If we're attacked again, it'll probably be a Jounin, since the two Chuanin were defeated, Naruto stated as they walked, to which Kakashi nodded. Without a doubt. Naruto perked up, and in a flash he fished out a kunai, hurling it into a bush, making the others jump, save for Kakashi, who must have sensed it as well. Naruto. Sasuke asked, tense. DCH, Kawarimi, huh? Naruto muttered, lowering his hand. His eyes closed, and he stretched out his senses. Everyone, get down. Kakashi ordered suddenly, ducking, just as Naruto detected the presence. Naruto grabbed Hinata and dropped, while Sasuke tackled Tazuna to the ground. The giant sword came flying through the air, passing through the space where the genin's necks would have been, before embedding itself in a tree, at which point a ninja landed on the hilt of the massive Zanbatu. The man wore striped pants, camo pattern leg and arm warmers, and bandages wrapped around the lower half of his face. Tied sideways to his head was a Kiri hit I ate. Well, well. Kakashi uttered as they all got to their feet. If it isn't the Karigakur missing nin, Mamachi's abuse a kun. Naruto. Sasuke uttered as Naruto narrowed his eyes. Be careful, guys. This guy's got as much chakra as I do. And it's dark. Very dark. And powerful. Naruto muttered. Hinata formed a few hand seals, then called by Akugan. Veins were visible around her eyes as her dejutsu activated and her eyes widened when she looked at Zabuza. Hey, she's right. This chakra. Sasuke, curious, activated his Sharingan and looked at Zabuza, his eyes widening as well. No. It's only a little, but his chakra stores are larger than yours, Naruto. Oh, Zabuza spoke, turning around so that he was facing them. He lowered himself into a crouch, resting his elbows on his knees as he watched them. Sharingan, by Akigen, and a skilled sensor. Not to mention Sharingan no Kakashi. No wonder why the Demon Brothers lost. Sorry, but. The old man is mine. Sharingan. Naruto and Sasuke uttered in unison, amazed, as Kakashi reached for his headband. Surround and protect Azuna, Kakashi ordered. Do not enter the fight. That's the teamwork here. Zabuza, first. Kakashi slowly lifted his headband to reveal his left eye, which had a scar through it. And in it. Was a Sharingan. Fight me. Ah, I already get to see the famous Sharingan. I'm honored, Zabuza said, and it was evident that he was smirking behind his bandages. When I was in the Kurigakur Anbu, I kept a handbook. It included information of you. It said, the man who has copied over 1000 jutsu. Copy ninja Kakashi. Boy, Sasuke, Naruto muttered. I thought the Sharingan was in a Chiha bloodline. Why the hell does he have it? No idea. Sasuke said, narrowing his own pair of Sharingan eyes. But I intend to find out. Let's end all the talking, Zabuza said as he reached down, grabbing the hilt of the sword he was standing on. I have to kill that old man. Immediately, the three genin moved to stand protectively around Tazuna, ready for anything. But. Kakashi, it seems I have to beat you first. Zabuza kicked off the tree, yanking his sword out as he flew toward the lake in front of them, landing on it. He released a large amount of chakra, causing the water to start swirling around him. Ninpu. Kurigakur no jutsu, ninja art. Hidden mist technique. Zabuza muttered as a thick mist rolled in, causing him to disappear from view. He'll come after me first, Kakashi announced. Mamachi Zabuza. As a ninja of Kiri, he was known as an expert in silent killing. You don't even notice until you're already dead. It's not like I can use the Sharingan perfectly. You guys be careful. Suddenly, the mist got even thicker, and Zabuza's voice was heard coming from all around them. Eight choices. Larynx, spine, lungs, liver, jugular, subclavian artery, kidneys, heart. Which one should I go after? Both Kakashi and Zabuza started flooding the area with killing intent. It was so much that Naruto felt every single muscle in his body tense, and he couldn't help but shiver slightly. 
He turned his head to look at Hinata to see that her byakugan was fading and her entire body was shaking. She was also visibly sweating in fright. Hinata, Naruto spoke suddenly, catching her attention. He smiled when she looked at him. Stay strong. This is what he wants, so keep your guard up. Sasuke, Kakashi spoke suddenly, and Naruto turned his head to see that Sasuke had been shaking as well. Don't worry. I'll protect you guys with my life, their sensei said as he turned his head to smile at them. I don't let my comrades die. We'll see about that. Came Zabuza's voice from between Tazuna and the Genin. It's over. Zabuza wasn't fast enough, however. In a flash, Sasuke's Shikudo had been unsheathed, and he spun faster than Naruto had ever seen him move. The blade flashed, and Zabuza's head was suddenly separated from his body, his eyes wide. The body and the head, however, exploded in a shower of water, and Naruto's eyes widened when he picked up on Zabuza's chakra. Sensei, behind you. He called out, but too late, as Zabuza's massive sword had already cut Kakashi in half. Not only for Kakashi's body to disperse into water as well, another Kakashi appearing behind Zabuza with a kunai at his neck. Don't move, Kakashi ordered. It's over. DCH Naruto thought, gritting his teeth. This damn mist is covered in his chakra. I can hardly even sense Kakashi through it. He thought, then looked at Hinata. Oi, Hinata, can you see anything? And no, Naruto-kun. Th there's t too much chakra in the air. Same here, Sasuke muttered. Then, his eyes widened when Zabuza spoke to Kakashi. Sensei, behind you. Kakashi's eyes widened when yet another Zabuza appeared behind Kakashi, the Zabuza in front of him dissolving into water. He ducked under a sword swing, but Zabuza didn't even pause when his sword dug into the ground. Instead, he spun, switching his grip and booted Kakashi in the face, sending him flying through the air. Zabuza immediately pulled his sword out of the ground and ran off, jumping toward the spot where Kakashi splashed into the water. As Kakashi surfaced, Zabuza landed behind him and flashed through hand seals. Tsuro no Jutsu, Water Prison Technique. He announced as the water shot up to envelop Kakashi in a ball, Zabuza holding his hand in it to keep it going. You tried to escape to the water. Big mistake. Now I have you in an inescapable prison. Zabuza said, chuckling. It's tougher if you can't move, you know. Now, Kakashi, we can finish things later. First, I'll take care of them, he said as he put his hand in a half-ram seal. Out of the water rose a Mizubunshin, who walked onto the shore, chuckling softly. Wearing those hit I ate and acting like ninja, the clone said, smirking behind his bandages. A real ninja is someone who has survived numerous brushes with death. Only when you're good enough to be listed in my handbook can you start calling yourself ninja. You're not ninja. Just brats. Take Tazuna San and run. Kakashi yelled suddenly. You have no chance of beating him. As long as he's keeping me trapped in this prison, he can't move. The Mizu Bunshin can't go very far from his real body. Just run away now. Naruto slowly turned his head to look at Sasuke, who smirked and nodded. Then he looked to Hinata, who gulped but steeled herself nonetheless, nodding as well. Run away. TCH, Kakashi Sensei, you underestimate us, Naruto said, a grin spreading on his face. A Mizu Bunshin only possesses one tenth of the original's power. Do you think us that weak? Besides, the success of this fight depends on you, Sasuke said. If we run away now, Zabuza will just kill you, then pick us off one by one at his leisure. Besides, those who abandon their comrades are even worse than trash, right? Azuna-san, Naruto said, ignoring Kakashi's wide-eyed look, instead looking to the old man, who sighed. Well. I planted this seed myself. I'm not going to say that I desire to live so much that I'd stop you. I'm sorry, guys. Fight as much as you want. Zabuza's clone, however, just started laughing, grinning slightly. You guys will never grow up. Going to keep playing ninja, eh? When I. When I was your age. These hands were already dyed red with blood. So? Naruto asked, raising an eyebrow. What, that makes you a ninja? That just makes you a psychopathic killer, you eyebrowless freak. He exclaimed, raising his hand to point at Zabuza. Don't talk as if you know us. Talking trash is for when the battle is over. Sasuke, combo 27. Ha, uh, right. Sasuke said as they both started flashing through hand seals. Naruto ended in a snake seal, and a wooden pole shot out of the ground in front of Sasuke, hitting past the Zabuza clone and then curving around him, intending on wrapping around him. The clone, despite the shock at seeing a Mokuten Jutsu used, leapt into the air to avoid it, which was a big mistake, as the wood shot upward and wrapped around him, trapping him, just as Sasuke finished his hand seals. Naruto Sasuke Kombi Jutsu. Naruto Sasuke Combo Technique. They both announced, Naruto grinning and Sasuke blowing a stream of flame at the wood, which shot up along it to encase the entire wooden pole, and as abuse a clone in flames, Yakiniku, grilled meat. 
The flames burned so hot that when the clone died, the water didn't drop to the ground, instead turning into steam and rising into the air. Oh, the reels of Yuza uttered in amusement. Mokuten ninjutsu, eh? That was unexpected. However. He put his hand in another half ram seal, and ten more Mizu Bunshin rose from the water, walking onto the shore. Sasuke, you can do it, right? Naruto asked his friend, who immediately knew what he was referring to and nodded, unsheathing his shikudo again. Good. I'll clear a path. Go. Sasuke shot off toward the clones, who all raised their swords and made to attack. Wood spikes shooting from the ground forced them to dodge, however, allowing Sasuke to pass through unscathed. He shot toward the reels Abusa, cocking his arm back, then swung. Tabuza, however, ducked under the swing, but Sasuke wasn't done, spinning and throwing a kunai at Tabuza's head, which forced him to dodge out of the way, pulling his hand out of the water prison in the process. The clones, seeing this, made to go after Sasuke, but that provided enough of a distraction for Naruto to focus his chakra into the ground and cause more wooden spikes to shoot out of it, impaling and destroying the clones. You brat. Zabuza yelled at Sasuke, reaching up to grab the sword on his back, only for Kakashi's sandal to plant itself into his face, knocking him back. Your opponent. Is me, Kakashi said, his Sharingan narrowed dangerously. Zabuza bounced on the water, landing in a crouch and rising to a stand. Heh, I got distracted and released the jutsu. Wrong, Kakashi said. You were forced to release it, he corrected, which made Zabuza twitch. Naruto, Sasuke, good job. Don't worry, though. I'll take it from here. Zabuza looked like he was gritting his teeth as Sasuke nodded and sheathed his shikudo, running past Kakashi and back to Naruto, Hinata and Tazuna, whereupon he gave Naruto a high five. I'll tell you now, I don't fall for the same jutsu twice, Kakashi said, staring calmly at Zabuza. What will you do now? DCH. Zabuza uttered and leapt back, before starting a long chain of seals, which were perfectly mimicked by Kakashi. Suiten. Sir Yuiden no jutsu, water element. Water dragon projectile technique. The both called out in perfect unison as two dragons formed out of the water between them and charged at each other, crashing into each other and exploding. At many seals, and he copied them flawlessly, Naruto muttered, bracing himself as the water washed up onto the shore and crashed into them. He turned to look at Sasuke. Can you do that? Not at this stage of the Sharingan, no, Sasuke said, shaking his head as he saw the two Jounin clash right underneath, where the two water dragons had crashed into each other, Kakashi blocking Zabuza's sword with a kunai. Strange. Zabuza thought, narrowing his eyes as he stared into the Sharingan. What's going on? He pushed off and jumped back, Kakashi mimicking his actions perfectly, as he tried circling around him, then stopped and raised his hands to perform the Karigakur Jutsu. By movements. Zabuza thought as he lowered one of his hands, Kakashi doing the same. He's completely. Reading them, Kakashi finished his line of thought, making his eyes widen. What? Did he read my mind? Zabuza thought, feeling sweat breaking out on his forehead, placing his hands in a seal. Damn. That. Freaky eye is pissing me off. Right. Zabuza twitched. Heh. All you're doing is copying me. You can't beat me, you monkey bastard. Both Kakashi and Zabuza exclaimed at once, and that really made Zabuza's eyes widen. Damn you. I'll make it so you can never open that mouth again. Zabuza growled out, flashing through hand seals. He stopped, however, amazed, as he saw himself form behind Kakashi. That. That's. Me. That's not possible. Is this one of his jinjutsu? Kakashi, to his surprise, finished the chain of seals Zabuza had been doing, and called out, Suiten. Daibakufu no jutsu, water element. Grand waterfall technique. As his Sharingan started spinning, and the water in front of him came to life and rose up, rushing at Zabuza. What? Impossible. Zabuza roared as the water smashed into him, sending him through a large amount of trees with the force of it. I'm the one doing the jutsu. Yet I can't keep up. He thought in a panic, right before getting washed into a tree, after which his arms and legs were pierced by kunai. It's over, came Kakashi's voice from above, making him look up to see Kakashi crouching on a tree branch. How? Can you see the future? Zabuza asked, still in shock. Yeah. Your future is death, Kakashi proclaimed, raising a kunai. Before he could use it, however, two senbin needles came flying out of nowhere and pierced Zabuza's neck. Zabuza's eyes were wide as he collapsed to the ground, and everyone looked up to another tree to see a kid around the genin's age, wearing a mask that looked almost like an anbu mask, which had the kiri markings on the forehead. He. You're right. He's dead, the boy spoke in a very feminine voice, which matched his feminine body. Who's the gender-confused mask boy? Naruto asked loudly, displaying his usual tact as Kakashi jumped down to Zabuza's body, checking his pulse. Thank you very much, the mask ninja said, bowing. I have been searching for the opportunity to kill Zabuza for a long time. 
Bad mask, Kakashi said, looking up at him. You're a Kiri Hunter Nin. Hunter Nin. Hinata repeated in confusion, looking to her teammates for explanations. Hunter Nin are a special division of Anbu, Sasuke explained. Their duty is to hunt down and kill missing Nin. TCH, to get a rank like that at that age. There are some great ninja out there, eh? Naruto asked, a grin on his face. It'd be nice to fight him. The Hunter Nin jumped down and slung Zabuza's arm over his shoulder, picking him up. Your battle is now over, and I must dispose of this body, since it seems to be a body with many secrets, he said, putting his hand in a half-ram seal. Farewell. The wind started kicking up around him so fast that it was howling, and then, in the blink of an eye, he and Zabuza's corpse were gone. The Kashi breathed a sigh of relief, pulling down his headband to cover his Sharingan, and Sasuke and Hinata deactivated their own eyes. Now we have to get to Zuna-san home, Kakashi announced to his genin. Let's go. Ahaha. Super thanks, guys. Tazuna said brightly. Come over to my house and relax for a while. Just as he said that, Kakashi suddenly froze and tipped forward, unable to move. Ah, I was wondering when that would happen, Naruto said, unsurprised as he walked up to Kakashi, crouching down in front of him. Your chakra stores are lower than mine, and you're using a transplanted eye. That should drain you pretty quickly, eh? Sasuke, give him a hand here. Why? Too weak to carry him yourself. Shut your face hole and give me a hand. Ha. Huh. That's it for it today guys, hope you all enjoyed this video. If you do please leave a like share and subscribe, and don't forget to check it out link tree, you will get all fanfiction link there. Thanks for watching.